Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. We pray you enjoyed the worship service, and now we're so glad that you've tuned in to participate in something just for our young people. We pray you have a wonderful time. Thank you for joining us. all welcome to mzpb kids on behalf of our pastor elder Mylon burwell and the mount zion primitive baptist church family here's a little time set aside as we educate encourage embark on an adventure as we learn a new bible lesson with our youth in mind today's lesson is called i am supporting scripture is god replied to moses i am who i am exodus 3 14. Our main idea is Jesus is the holy, perfectly perfect God. We are who we are as Christians because Jesus is the great I am. First, I want to ask you a question. Who am I? I know all of you know me by my name, Miss Charlene, but is that, is that all there is to who I am? No, of course not. Your name is not the only thing that defines you. Some people may call me sister or mom or friend or even daughter. Now, someone may ask you, who are you? And you may be called a soccer player, an artist, a piano player, a student, or even a dancer. These titles help describe who you are. We can get to know people a little bit better when we know some of the other names people use to describe us. Now, who is the person we want to know better than anyone else in the whole wide world? Yes, you're right. His name is Jesus. Did you know that Jesus gives us some very special ways to describe him in the Bible? In the book of John, Jesus gives us seven descriptions of himself. Each of these seven descriptions tells us a little bit more about the character of Jesus, about who he is. Each of these seven statements also start with two special words. Yes, you guessed it, I am. That may seem pretty obvious. Of course it starts out with I am. I start out describing myself by saying I am too. I am a mom, I am a wife, I am a friend and I am a sister. The difference is, however, when Jesus says I am, the words I am have a special meaning in the Bible. That is what we're going to look at today. It starts way back in the second book of the Bible, Exodus. Exodus 3, 1 through 15 says, one day Moses was tending the flock of his father-in-law, Jethro. He led the flock afar into the woods and came to Sinai, the mountain of God. There the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a blazing fire from the middle of a bush. Moses stared in amazement. Though the bush was not engulfed in flames, it didn't burn up. This is amazing, Moses thought to himself. Why isn't the bush burning up? I must go see. When the Lord saw Moses to take a closer look, God called to him from the middle of the bush, Moses, Moses, here I am, Moses replied. Do not come any closer, the Lord warned. Take off your sandals, for you are standing on holy ground. I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And when Moses heard this, he covered his face because he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord told him, I have certainly seen the oppression of my people in Egypt. I have heard their cries of distress because of their harsh slave drivers. And yes, I'm aware of their suffering. So I have come down to rescue them from the power of the Egyptians and lead them out of Egypt into their own fertile space. It is the land flowing of milk and honey. 
the land where the Canaanites, Hittites, Amorites, Presrites, Hivites, and Je Jebusites now live. Look, the cry of the people of Israel has reached me, and I have seen how harshly the Egypts abused them. Now go, I am sending you to Pharaoh, and you must lead the people of Israel out of Egypt. But Moses protested to God, who am I to appear before Pharaoh? Who am I to lead the people um, of Israel out of Egypt? God answered, I will be with you, and this is your sign that I am the one who has sent you. And when you have brought the people out of Egypt, you will worship God at this very mountain. But God, but Moses protested, if I go to the people of Israel and tell him, tell them the God of your ancestors has sent me uh, to you, they will ask, ask me, what is his name? And then what should I tell them? This is my favorite part. And God replied to Moses, I am who I am. Say this to the people of Israel, I am has sent to me to you. God also said to Moses, say this to the people of Israel, Yahweh, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my eternal name my name to be remembered for all generations. So in this story, we hear God give uh, what he calls his eternal name, his name to remember for all generations. What was his name? Yes, you're right, I am. Now really smart people have discussed this for a long, long time, but it basically comes down to this. When God says his name is I am, or I am who I am, he means that nothing and no one can ever change his character. He has always been the perfect and loving God. He is the perfect loving God right now, and he will be the perfect and loving God forevermore, no matter what. He is perfectly perfect. He relies on no one and nothing to make him perfect. When we see God refer himself now on in the Bible as I am, it is God's way of reminding us that he is perfect. He will always be and will always, uh, he will all, he is all we will ever need anything for our life. So next time when somebody asks you, who are you? Say it loud, say it proud, I am a child of God. Until next time, bye. Oh yeah, Exodus 314.